very small and the skirt very wide. It was all very thought through. It was real refinement. Christian Dior died in 1957. He was 52, but his successor had already been chosen. Just before his death, he'd expressed his admiration for a very promising new talent in the company, Yves Saint Laurent. He was to follow in Dior's footsteps until he began to work under his own name in 1960. From then until 1989, all Dior's models were chosen by Marc Bouin. It was also during this time that Dior moved into perfume. The years flew by. By now, the house of Dior was creating a new style of luxury for the 90s. But the hand of the original genius can still be seen at work. It's almost as though Christian Dior's spirit lives through other creators, such as Gianfranco Ferre. Ferre had his own collection and was already very successful when the Dior company asked him to become their fashion designer in 1989. His brief was not an easy one to create a style for today while remaining true to the 50s and the years of the great master. Ferré's task was to become one of reincarnation. Je pense que euh, être euh, nommé en tout cas avoir eu la demande I think that to be chosen to work for Dior is a unique opportunity for any creator in the world. Because Dior is a name which carries a lot of allure, one of a paramount place in the history of French fashion. Personally, I like adventures, so I accepted immediately and realized that the beginning would not be easy. But I was so interested in the history, and I don't think anyone in the world would have turned down the opportunity to be a part of that history. He studied Dior's style very closely. He wanted to create a Dior style for today, and he succeeded marvelously. He brought back into fashion the dress, evening dresses. He maintained the style, that's certainly true. Ferre's clothes are extremely refined. It's no coincidence that this Italian romantic started as an architect, and he uses the techniques of architecture when creating new fashions. The similarity with Dior doesn't stop here. Ferre's collections for Dior are designed to sell. All models are created with consumer groups and specific market segments in mind. The old Mr. Dior wasn't just a great artist. He was also a shrewd businessman. He was the first to launch the idea of franchising. He expanded the company to cover accessories and knew how to combine art with making money. I believe that the collections were very well organized. They seemed terribly light, airy and always elegant. But in fact, it was very studied. There was a number of models for the so-called ready-to-wear collections. There were a certain number of models shown only to journalists. And then extravagant models for those who wanted that style. But all of this was very orchestrated. In any event, for me it has been very important to know what motivated Mr. Dior to make certain choices and then to move forward in the same way and live in today's world. Not to feel forced to use the themes that made him a myth and bring them into today's fashion world as a retro style. I believe that it is important to be a part of the world in which we live, to create structures like an ambassador responding to today's demands, and to add to them the same eccentricity that Mr. Dior did.
I found that he had a real English sense of humor, and this came out in the way he made bows, hats, and other such things. And I like to move in the same spirit. This was a very delicate task for the Italian designer. It's no easy thing to follow in Dior's footsteps, and in the Paris fashion world, it's by no means readily accepted that a foreigner become the figurehead of one of the leading French houses. As long as everything runs smoothly, he's celebrated. But any tiny mishap is noted, and all the critical observers are only too eager to discover if Ferry has enough creative energy to stay at the top in Paris with Dior, as well as create his own Gianfranco Ferry collections. The pressure is enormous, but then Ferry is a pretty cool customer. I split my week into two. The first day in Milan, I'm completely Ferré, and I work hard at not being Dior at all. When I'm at Dior on the other days, I'm completely Dior. I have two different teams working for Dior and Ferré, and there is never any interaction between the two. In any case, when we speak of Dior, we speak of an emanation of the French style and French fashion. There is a very feminine side, very eccentric in a soft way. The fairy style is more futuristic. It is a woman with less on her shoulders, a woman with a very strict and determined tradition. You could perhaps say that the fairy woman is very efficient and very arbitrary. Avenue Montaigne in Paris, Dior's headquarters since 1946. This is where you can run into French film stars doing their shopping. Here are Jean-Claude Brialy and Jean Marais. But ordinary shoppers and tourists flock here in their thousands, tens of thousands even. Everything is still just as Dior would have liked it. Actually, the great master is looking on from his corner. Fashion is the flagship of the Christian Dior group. Clothing accounts for a turnover of $1 billion. That might seem like a lot, but even so, fashion is the baby of the Christian Dior empire. From its very early days, Dior chose safety in diversification. On the heels of haute couture came normal fashion wear, then stockings, later lingerie, and finally accessories and men's clothing. The name Dior was used on sunglasses, jewelry, luxury household goods, and much more. But what turned out to be the most important diversification was perfume. And even this exceptionally important strategic decision was taken in this building in 1947 by the same all-encompassing figure. Perfume is reasonably cheap to produce and the profit margins can be impressive. The main problem is the enormous competition. Advertising pressure and name awareness are very important for these top-class companies. Dior has both of these, of course. The prestige of its fashion creations over the years, the fashion house's reputation, the media attendance at its fashion shows. All these elements contribute to the sales of other Dior products. Fashion is the motor that drives everything else. Fashion represents prestige, perfumes and beauty products, sales, according to the head of Dior Perfumes. There can be no doubt as to the importance of haute couture to demonstrate initiative, creative skills and a sense of exploration. On top of which, the Prêt-à-Porter collections with the vast range of accessories all make the clothes part of the business quite profitable. But the most viable part of the business for the group, the House of Dior, are the perfumes and beauty products. Economical, profitable, no doubt. And this, of course, goes for any luxury business like ours. 
du même type que nous. Christian Dior today leads the way in industry trends, and business is its main spring. But the company tries to create a balance by accentuating its spiritual values. The consumer needs to know that Dior is more than just a bottle of scent. Il serait euh, absurde de, de lire notre exercice tout simplement comme... It would be ridiculous to rely purely on the industrial manufacture of our products for our success. Nous produisons des valeurs. We are much more than a production house. We produce values, the spiritual values of our public. They may not know how to express these, but we do know how to create and reveal them. Photographs for Dior decides on how the brand image for Dior products should be presented to the consumer and is, alongside Ferré and Roger, the third reincarnation of the genius of Christian Dior. The Dior woman is an exceptional woman. She is extraordinary. She hasn't aged. She is even more beautiful and even younger than ever, despite the fact that she was created in 47. She doesn't know how to grow old. She constantly adapts. She's wonderful. She's always in step with the times. She still has the look of the 50s, but the feel of the year 2000. As well as the photography, Tien is also responsible for makeup. Every season, he chooses the style and colors that will compose the Dior collection. His creative and business responsibilities are enormous. I've tried to work light into the makeup collection of the last few years. Because for me, colors of makeup should no longer match the color of the clothes a woman is wearing. They are not even true colors. They do not even reflect the colors she is wearing. The collection dates back to the 50s when eyelids had to be matched up to the color of a blouse or a jacket. But today we look to bathe a woman in the lights of the day. So we create a lot of shades around the basic colors. Brown, chestnut, beige, gray and black. These for me are the colors of evening, night, day and dawn. They are the tones that the skin reflects. So we want to sell shades that are in harmony with the times of the day. That's how we bring skin closer to nature. What you see when it doesn't work is a girl with dark makeup when her skin is pink. It isn't natural. When it's dark, her skin is lighter, like the light of the moon. That's because she is in harmony with the colors of that hour. If it's warm, bright sunshine, we need to see more orange in the lips, perhaps, or more pink on the cheeks. We don't want to see chestnut or gray. No, all makeup colors need to be in harmony with the colors of the weather and time of day, especially for today's woman. Tien's ideas end up in the shops after their long journey through the assembly line of Dior's factory. All the products follow the same route, from powder compacts and mascaras to lipsticks, which are made in vast quantities from cocoa butter.
There's also a color laboratory in this factory where specialists work constantly to find the right color collection for Dior. One that will reflect the spirit of the day. Not too many new colors and not too many of the old ones. Notre façon de travailler est de tenir compte de la mode, bien entendu, c'est ce qui fait notre réputation. We've earned our reputation from our fashions. But also, we're an international house with branches around the world. So it would be out of the question in 1993 to create a collection purely for the French without paying heed to international trends and uh, local cultures. Here's an example. If we are preparing foundation cream, we wouldn't make the same color for the Japanese who have a very pale skin as for South Americans who have more tan skin. Eyeshadow, lipsticks, face powders and bottles, everything is carefully thought out to the last detail. What exactly has to be thought out? What the woman of tomorrow is thinking about, what she's sensitive to, what clothes she'll wear, and what she'll wear with these clothes. All is decided here, before the consumer has even thought about the question, let alone the answer. The influence of fashion on these decisions cannot be denied. There's growing consultation between the two different branches on the look for each new season. Clothes will determine the face and vice versa. The self-portrait of Ferré isn't on the wall for nothing. I have the chance to assist at all the haute couture fashion shows, which is an extraordinary source of inspiration. It's true, I love constantly having his designs around me. And the last design, here in the shadows, is a superb red, and it goes very well with our latest makeup tints. It was worn by a black model, which was fantastic. So the circle is complete, just as Christian Dior may have imagined it. He was the first French haute couturier to have such a vision, and his legacy is here for all to see. The Dior Group has an annual turnover of $4 billion and is a shareholder in the luxury goods holding company LVMH, together with Louis Vuitton and the champagne company Moet Hennessy. If one excludes the automobile industry, Dior has the highest turnover in the luxury goods business. The creation of clothes and haute couture is no longer the driving force of this business, certainly not from a turnover and profit point of view. But who can think of Dior without thinking of the glamour and extravagance of its haute couture? The world of Dior was built on tradition and standing, and these are created by the hands of the masters of beauty, the masters of yesteryear and of today. Yeah. 
Ça fait pas comme des tableaux